And we will see who can jump up today. Eliminator format, ski board, swim. Top two can go all the way through to race three. The bottom six will be eliminated from round one. That leaves just 12 in round two. The top half will go through to the final, which will have eight athletes. Ski, swim, board is the order of race one. The girls are on the line and set to go. And it's a new look field for round three, isn't it, Jack? It certainly is, Josh. There are four debutantes lining up for race three. They include Brittany Pierce from Wanda, Lani Pallister from Alexandra Headlands, Ruby Nolan from Sunshine Beach, and Hayley Cox from Corumba. Yeah, they've come from far and wide, and the future is being put on show here in round three. And of course, all the big names as well. Miller, Lana Rogers, the automatic qualifiers. Naomi Scott has been in fine form. Hannah Scully, the young gun there. And of course, the defending series champion, Brielle Cooper, hasn't had the start to the summer she was looking for. A bit of an up and down couple of opening rounds. So she'll be looking for a big one here. Gemma Smith as well. The girls are on the line. They're set and away. So automatically straight in. The surf conditions very tough here at North Wollongong. It's not giant, but it's really coming down on the bank. And if you get cleaned up by one of these waves, it can absolutely end your race almost immediately. So the girls negotiate the first one. Ruby Nolan off there. She is on the side of her ski. And well, one half of the field is going nowhere. That left half is just standing still. We've got two, three, four, five off. Brielle Cooper's one of them. And she's going to be forced to roll again. Georgia Miller's been smacked and it's absolute carnage on one half of the field and the other half shot straight out. We can see our back four markers there, Josh, finding it very hard to get through this North Wollongong bank, which is hitting very, very solidly, Josh. Three to four foot breaking down very powerful and it has held those girls up on the left-hand side. Lani Pallister off again and will be the last one to get out through this North Wollongong break. She's in good company though, Jack. Real Cooper, the defending series champion and George Miller not far in front of her as well so some of the big guns you see Miller just come into shot there she's at the bottom end let's take a look at this replay you can see Brielle Cooper on the far side there Gemma Smith gets absolutely smacked Brielle Cooper you can see she tries to go up and over the top but gets obliterated and this shore break here at North Wollongong sends a bunch of those girls flying on that right hand side two three four off just like that maybe Kirsty Higgison the only one that survived she's been forced to roll as well as our leaders just punch through and you can see you'd rather be on that left-hand side of the field than on that right-hand side as the girls make their way out to see it's Danielle McKenzie in one, Naomi Scott in two, Tian Raymond's had a great start as well in three so really good from these girls and not so good from some of the big guns down the back half of the field. Well Josh they were the three girls we saw sneak through that first wave they also snuck over the second so didn't cop too much power from the north North Wollongong Shorey that did stand up and hit a few of the other girls. And the pressure's on the back markers at the moment. Second last, Brielle Cooper. Fourth last is Georgia Miller. And this could be their series all over. I know you get to drop a race in the overall point score, but you don't want, want to have a 18th or a 16th hanging over your head and knowing you've got to perform for the rest of the summer. So let's see if these girls can get back into it. Lana Rogers, they're working through the field. Courtney Hancock as well. And here is Brielle Cooper trying to get herself back into it. But if anyone could do it, it's the defending series champion. Well, Brielle Cooper, Josh, she is the defending series champion, as you said, and probably a lot more pressure on her shoulders this season coming off the back of that win last year. Yeah, nobody expected her to win that series. And she, she just kept got on a roll, kept winning, kept winning, kept winning. And I think this year, all eyes are on her to do the same thing. And whether she's feeling the pressure or whether she's just having a tough year, we will wait and see. A couple of the girls go down some waves. And of course, in this opening round, there is two races going on. You've got to be in the first two if you want to survive. One goes off out the back. Oh, Naomi Scott almost falls off as well. A couple of girls are going to go down this one. We'll go back to the conversation there. Here we go. Very, very late for Hannah Scully. Naomi Scott, Danielle McKenzie, Tian Raymond. They will charge through transition. Here we go. Gemma Smith going down the wave. She goes sideways straight into Ruby Nolan. Sends her off and Gemma Smith manages to get it straight back down that. So great skills from Smith. Nolan's in the water swimming and as is Hannah Scully there as well. So a couple of girls in trouble. Lana Rogers up and around. So through Emily Doyle. Courtney Hancock there. Maddie Dunn. Electra Outram. Bay Wilton Stedden goes through. Gemma Smith, no problems at all. And the rest of the girls who fell off, they've got a lot of work to do. They do. Georgia Miller comes around there, Josh. 
Brittany Pierce goes through. Kirsty Higgerson as well. Jade Hardstaff, and we're all waiting on Brielle Cooper, who's still in second last place. Haley Cox, Ruby Nolan as well. So that's your 16 and 17. We're just waiting for 18, 19, and 20 to go through. Well, Tian Raymond is into the swim now, as is Danielle McKenzie. And I think Naomi Scott's probably started to try and work away, heading into one of her stronger legs. But she did a lot of work, obviously, Josh, in the off-season to try and get back. Lani Pallister last through transition, and she is deep in the red zone at the moment. But the big thing for Pallister is she's the best swimmer in the field, hands down, bar none. She was the world champion just a couple of weeks ago in the open swim. She's just still an under-17. So if anyone's going to be able to drag herself back into this race and get herself around and outside this top six red zone, it's going to be Lani Pallister. Well, she'll be looking to make a big move back through this field, but she's got a lot of work to do, Josh. If she's going to find herself in the top 14 and progressing to race two. Well, she's in good company there. A couple of young guns that are good swimmers. Georgia Miller's working her way through. Brittany Pierce, Ruby Nolan. All of those girls are trying to get out of the red zone. And of course, there's two different races in this opening round. It's the race to get in the top two. That means you skip all the way through to the final today. You skip round two. You sit back and watch everybody else go for it. And then you've got to stay out of the bottom six. And that's the real test for these girls. You want to either be at the top end or you want to definitely stay away from the bottom end. And at the moment, working her way along the back, looking very, very comfortable, is Carly Nerland, the current women's world champion there. But she's sitting in fourth place. She's outside the top two there. Naomi Scott, Danielle McKenzie and Tian Raymond really putting the hammer down in this second swim leg. Well, it's Raymond and Scott that have moved away from McKenzie at this stage and got a couple of body length leads. So Tian Raymond trying to go with Naomi Scott. She would have used the wash on the way out. She knows Scott is a very, very high quality swimmer and he's starting to work away from the rest of the field. You know what's incredible about Naomi Scott? She used to be a great swimmer who just survived around on the board and ski, but her board and ski have come on incredibly in the last two years. And now she's one of the strongest ski paddlers in the field. And she's a real threat for the future as these waves start to loom on the outside. Well, still a junior competitor, Josh, and here's a wave for our leaders. Carly Nerthen's going to get down. It looks like Lana Rogers is there. Danielle McKenzie copped that one on the head, and this may bring the back markers back up onto Na on Naomi Scott. Yeah, Lana Rogers was the big winner out of that one there. She really got that all the way through, and we look at the back of the field at the moment, and it's still... Lani Pallister's gone past Brielle Cooper. That is incredible. That's how big a swim Lani Pallister's got, and Brielle Cooper couldn't do anything about it but it's Naomi Scott on the front of this race who has gone up and around and she will lead into the third and final leg of this opening round of the Eliminator and she looks in very very good form. Well Naomi Scott she is in good form and she'll be looking for that automatic qualification through to race three Josh we've already spoken about it but how important is it to have that rest and not have to go around in the second round? Two and three Courtney Hancock yeah mate it's massive unbelievable for these girls Carly Nerth and Danielle McKenzie Smith there Maddie Dunn George Georgia Miller's had a massive swim to get herself out of the red zone and she would have had heart in her throat for a while there. Kirsty Higgison goes up and through and Naomi Scott's being forced to roll and that's almost our 14 at the moment. We go back and have a look. The red zone will start to come through that transition there and in the history of this kind of eliminator with the top two can qualify through, if you finish top two in this race and have a look at the swim by Lani Pallister, Brittany Pierce, Ruby Nolan there, Hannah Scully, Haley Cox, and Jade Hardstaff. But if you can finish in the top two in this opening race, you guarantee yourself a spot on the podium in race three. It always happens. And Brielle Cooper, she's not worried about the podium. She's just worried about surviving race number one here at North Wollongong. Well, Brielle Cooper will be thinking about the points, Josh. You can drop one of your five rounds, but she wants to make sure she has a good one. This isn't one where she wants to get a bad result. And if Brielle Cooper can get herself back into the top 14, it means she at least progresses into race two and still gives herself a shot at winning. Experience coming to the fore there. We look at the red zone after the swim. Three of the four debutantes there, they are in the red zone at the moment. So experience in these eliminators is key. And the girls start to work their way through. A couple go up and over and a couple have been forced to go underneath and roll there. 
Lani Pallister, Ruby Nolan, first time there, both of them on their stomachs and a couple of the more experienced girls, Hannah Scully, they're up on her knees really working hard. So the pressure of this kind of racing is really coming to the fore at the moment and starting to wear on a couple of the young guns. Well, Hayley Cox in there as well. She's using the wash of Hannah Scully. And we're back on with our leader, Josh, Naomi Scott. Naomi Scott carrying that good form from the world titles into this round three of the New Jagrain event. Yeah, what a world title she had, part of the Australian youth team. Also cleaned up the Ironwoman ski race, swim race, second in the board. So she has had a month, that's for sure. Continuing on here, Danielle McKenzie, Kirsten. Higgison right on the tail of Courtney Hancock there. We can see Tian Raymond working her way back to the beach at the moment in the middle of the screen. She's trying to catch our two leaders. So's Carly Nervin, so's Maddie Dunn. And it looks like maybe a race in five or six for those top two spots, but our leaders have definitely cleared away and it's going to come down to one wave. We cut back to the red zone there and there are those girls doing everything they can to try and stay out of the bottom six. There's a wave on maybe for Gemma Smith there. Carly Nervin looks like she's going to push down one, but one's just popped up for Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott. Lana Rogers goes around the outside. Naomi Scott and those two have a little chat. They look very happy because they know as long as they don't make any mistakes at all, they'll get back to the beach. It's very, very close, but I think these two, yeah, they're quick enough. They will be our first two through the final here. Lana Rogers wins race one. Naomi Scott in a tight second. You can see how much it means to Lana Rogers. The little fist pump, but the job's not done. And then to stay inside the top 14. So that's three. Carly Nervin's four. Maddie Dunn is five. We've got six with Electra out from Danielle McKenzie. Courtney Hancock. Kirsty Higgison goes around as well. Emily Doyle scrapes through. Great job there. Gemma Smith after getting smacked on that ski in the opening round. She'll survive. Georgia Miller after being last survives as well. So Bay Wilden Snedden's through. Georgia Miller survives as well. Hannah Scully, Ruby Nolan up the beach. Uh, Haley Cox as well. They're only going to be one spot here, so Scully's going to get there. Scully survives. Haley Cox goes out. Ruby Nolan gets a 16th place in her first ever performance. Very, very good for a debutant, as was this girl, Lani Pallister, who'll finish in 17th for her first ever trip to the big show. Jade Hardstar from Corumban Beach will finish in 18th. Brittany Pierce and Brielle Cooper. They'll sprint up and every place counts for Brielle Cooper. She doesn't want a last place, that's for sure. But Brittany Pierce doesn't care about reputations, gets 19th and the defending series champion gets stone cold last from Karawa. It's a long way back for Brielle Cooper. Let's take a look at results there. Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott, they'll go through to race three and sit out race two. And we say goodbye to Hayley Cox, Ruby Nolan, Lani Pallister, Jade Hardstaff, Brittany Spears and Brielle Cooper. And we'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back to the Ocean 6 Series in North Wollongong Beach. You're watching the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series. Round three, race two of the Eliminator format. We've already said goodbye to six girls. We've put two girls through to the final already in Naomi Scott and Lana Rogers. So we're left with 12. And Jack Hansen joining me in commentary. As always, you've got to stay in the top half of this field. Six will go to the final. Six will go home. It's all on the line here. That's exactly right, Josh. We're looking for the top six. Make sure you're in the top six and out of the red zone and you will advance to today's final and the girls are away. Board swim ski is the order. The girls off and away. Courtney Hancock, former series champion herself, former world champion, former Australian champion. She has done it all. She's looking for another race victory here today, but she's going to have to do it the hard way. Gemma Smith leads early on in the middle as she pops up and over. Bay Wilton standing alongside her and George Georgia Miller as well, so the middle of the field's got the best of the start, but Danielle McKenzie on the right-hand side starts to make a move. Well, McKenzie is moving up very quickly, Josh. Keep an eye on Hannah Scully. We've seen her paddle her board very, very well this season so far. That's her on your left-hand side of screen. The green and pink board making her way out and stuck back a little bit early, so the girls are in one big line as they head out towards the first camp. And unlike race one, the whole field's got now together. Everybody in there, maybe Maddie Dunn just on the the tail with plenty of work to do. Georgia Miller on the other end. So the Northcliffe girls are having an absolute day out. You can see a couple side by side there, but 
Tell us about racing the second race of an eliminator, Jack. They've obviously gone through race one. They've given everything there. The lactate's just starting to build. How tough is this race too? Well, Josh, it's very hard for me to explain because I was always eliminated <laughs> in race one, but I'm sure it would be very difficult for these girls to back up, Josh, after a five-minute turnaround. They've got to get their heart rate back down. They've got to relax and get themselves ready to do it all again. Yeah, we saw a few of them in between races going for a swim, trying to get rid of that lactic acid and, and not letting it pull up because that five-minute gap is probably just enough time for well, it to peak and really make things tough in race two. But it looks like Georgia Miller's really worked her way into this race too well because she's off and flying at the moment. Alongside her, well, just behind her, Gemma Smith is doing her best. Bay Wilton Stenton's had a great start so far. And Carly Nerven always there. Courtney Hancock on the right-hand side in the orange. Centre of the screen, Kirsty Higgison just behind them. And the girls start to work for home. And earlier in the day in these board races, if it's grouped up like this, you tend to get a lot of the field on the one wave because there's only one or two waves coming through every now and again. And you don't get a big sort of break but Georgia Miller seemed to have found her own little runner she'll fall off the back of and the rest of these girls are going to try and come down one and go alongside her but there's just nothing on offer Georgia Miller again Danielle McKenzie goes down so does Maddie Dunn Electra Outram might have missed it one or two of the girls three four of the girls have missed it and just like that we have a bottom four and two on this. Oh, a little chat there from Maddie Dunn and Danielle McKenzie, the training partners. A little apology. And we've got a top eight at the moment. And uh, eight definitely doesn't go into six. Well, it's going to be hard for those girls on that second wave, Josh. They'll be trying to work their way up and through now. But four of them out of the mix at this stage. There's our eight. We're looking for six. And here come the four up and around. The current World Iron Woman champion is there. Hannah Scully is there as well. Tian Raymond and Electra Outram. So onto the ski leg. They'll be looking to make, make a move back through. And if our front eight get held up here in this North Wollongong break, there's a chance that they'll be back in the mix. Electra Outram just looked like she was struggling through transition there. A little, maybe a limp there. She battled through and she's as tough as nails. We'll see how it goes. Gemma Smith fires up, goes up and over the whitewash. Very, very skilled. But there's another one to greet her. She'll cop it right in the face. Just like that, but manages to stay upright. Somebody goes off in the middle. That's Bay Wilden Stedden. So she's gone from second place all the way back to almost last place. Oh, so does Tian Raymond. She gets the big back shot there. Carly Nerthen's been hammered as well. And if we had a split in the field before, we've got a different one now because half that front group has been absolutely obliterated. Emily Doyle's off her ski. Tian Raymond's come off for a second time. And at the top of your screen there, Hannah Scully is about to get smashed again. Yes, she does. And she goes shooting backwards. Outram's off and swimming as well. And that's almost a bottom six at the moment. There's five at the back there. And, well, seven. Scully rolls again. A couple gets smacked. And what about this, Jack? All of a sudden, it's looking very unlikely any of these girls will survive and make it through. And, oh, absolutely obliterated in the center there. What about that? Uh, Baywild and Stedden got smashed. Well, Emily Doyle is back there as well, Josh. So some of our leaders, some of our top eight, held up very heavily by that North Wollongong shore break as Danielle McKenzie makes her way around the first tanning can. She'll be happy, as will Gemma Smith. Gemma Smith working her way around as well. So these two got out very, very quickly, very clean off the beach while the others were obliterated. It's funny, there's just not the same urgency on the front of this race as there was in race one because there's not the reward. You've just got to finish in the top six and the girls would have seen that the back half's been smacked. So they're just trying to... Well, calm themselves, slow the heart rate, get around as easy and as efficiently as possible and not to use up too much energy. Danielle McKenzie chasing Gemma Smith on the way home. The girl from your minor, she's been around a very, very long time and she's done it with the best of it at the moment. She's got herself a little runner. That's going to turn into a wave. Let's see if she's got the skills to hold this all the way to the beach because getting out through this tough break is one thing, but getting home is just as difficult. She puts the power down, tries to get the nose out in front. Oh, it sends her sideways, throws the leg over, and she'll roll out, and mistakes like that, they can cost you here. Danielle McKenzie's seen that happen. She knows she's not going to make the same mistake. Gets a much littler wave, something that's much easier to handle, and she should shoot straight straight past Gemma Smith in this shore break. Well, Danielle McKenzie looks to be holding that little one back to the beach. Maddie Dunn and Georgia Miller come down a little bubble as well. Behind them, we've got Kirsty Higgison and Carly Nerthen, Josh. So our top 
five or six are out in front at the moment have well and truly opened up a gap. Gemma Smith body surfs her way to the beach and look that gap's been closed. Danielle McKenzie heads round into the swim. Maddie Dunn and Georgia Miller. Georgia Miller have to be confident in where she's sitting inside the top four with just the swim leg to go. Her strongest leg without a doubt. Fifth place, Kirsty Higgison. And sixth place is the current world champion, Carly Nervin. So that is the cutoff and all these girls are in the red zone. Oh, Courtney Hancock trying to go down one, trying to keep it straight. No, she loses it. Tries to body surf out of the top. Gets steamrolled by a ski. Electra Outram, the first of the girls in the red zone, goes up and around and you can see the determination on her face. She knows she's just got to catch one girl. Close enough, if good enough in this break. Courtney Hancock will be kicking herself for those mistakes on the ski. Gets the hurry up from Wally Williams there from Northcliffe telling her that she's only got to catch two to stay alive in this competition. And Courtney Hancock can swim, Josh. As can some of the others coming through. Emily Doyle, a young superstar who's done a lot of work. Oh, and there's Bay Wilden Snedden. She gets smashed, goes down the mine shaft here at North Wollongong and will be collecting plenty of coal there from the bottom. <laughs> what about that? Bay Wilden Snedden is having a ski leg to forget. Oh, she rides the ski sideways there. It's currently back just let her go, girl. Get to the beach because that is a leg she'll want to forget. She's all the way back in 12th place in this race. So let's take a look at the red zone. Electra Outram, Courtney Hancock, Tian Raymond, Hannah Scully, Emily Doyle, and Bay Wilden Snedden. And well, you'd have to think Hancock, Raymond, Scully, and Doyle are close enough, if good enough. Wilden Snedden, it'll take a bit of a miracle and maybe away from the cans to get her back into this because you can see sixth has just gone up and over that wave, and there's seventh place there outside that safe zone at the moment as they head out to sea and that's a better indication of the gap because that is your top six there heading out to the can and seventh place isn't even in the shot. Well at the moment these girls are all our automatic qualifiers Josh they will all make today's final unless something catastrophic happens. We have seen it, we have seen waves rolling through on the bank there is a possibility that these girls will swim back all the way to the beach and potentially our chaser there in seventh Electra Outram could pick up a wave to try and pull herself back in but at this stage it looks almost done and dusted. Outram trying to join her teammate from the Noosa Club Lana Rogers in the final and don't forget Naomi Scott and Rogers are sitting on the beach watching these girls go head to head beating each other up knowing full well that they're not using the energy and they have a giant advantage when we put our foot on the line in just a few moments time so as they start to work home it's Gemma Smith from Maddie Dunn. Georgia Miller's just dropped off a little bit and done she stops she looks for a wave she knows there's something coming she's going to do it the easy way she tries to pick this one up Gemma Smith's definitely going to get it and Dunn missed it so that's a big mistake from Maddie Dunn there she should have just kept swimming all the way into the beach maybe Danielle McKenzie picks one up as well so the two girls from Northcliffe no problems at all and there's a huge gap back to seventh place and I just think it's too much with these waves starting to come through Georgia Miller will get down it she will push out in front. So will Kirsty Higgison and Gemma Smith will win race two of the Eliminator format. She'll go through to the final, but who will join her there? So we've got Naomi Scott. We've got Lana Rogers. We have Gemma Smith and Maddie Dunn. One and two in this race. No problems at all. High fives all round for Maddie Dunn. Kirsty Higgison, great body serving skills there. She will qualify. Danielle McKenzie as well. No problems at all for the Northcliffe girls. They're loving it at the moment. Speaking of, Georgia Miller trots up and around and the world champion, Carly Nerven will be the last one to go through. She'll make her way through transition, loses the cap as usual, walks across the line and books her spot in race three of the Eliminator. And now it's on for points and placings for the rest of these girls. They can't win the day, but they can maximize their points. It's some great body serving skills from Courtney Hancock. And what about that one? She will stand up and finish in ninth place overall a great job for Courtney Hancock looks around knows her day is done but she will get maximum points for the girls missing out on the final here a good result for Courtney Hancock keeps her series hopes ever so alive Electra Outram stands up in 10th place there just behind her Emily Doyle's had a massive swim gone from second last up into 11th place at the moment great performance from her Tian Raymond's there as well and Bay Wilden Snedden and Hannah Scully, they will trot up and around. We'll wait to see. Scully gets there. 
up into 12th place. Tian Raymond in 13th place. And Bay Wildenstedden, after a ski leg to forget, will get a 14th place finish here in round three. So let's take a look at the results. Smith, Dunn, Higgison, Kirst, uh, Daniel McKenzie, Georgia Miller and Carly Northern all survive. We say goodbye to Hancock, Outram. And we head over the page to Doyle, Scully, Raymond and Wilton Snedden. We are down to just eight. that will decide round three of the New Chagrin Iron Woman Series from North Wollongong Beach. We'll take a look at the highlights of race two as we go through. And Jack, you could throw a blanket over him early, but it really was that ski leg that decided the whole thing. Well, Josh, this is where your day was done all one and making it through to the final round in race three. The girls spread way out in the swim and it was our top six that got through clean in the ski that managed to hold their positions round in the swim to advance. So you've seen them all go around and obviously Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott are the red hot favourites, but who did you like from race two? Well, Josh, they'll be very well rested and extremely hard to beat, but Georgia Miller has been in great form so far this season. She's strong in every leg and I would assume she'll be one still pushing the pace. Yeah, definitely. That's for sure. And well, Gemma Smith had a big race too, but let's see if she's got anything left in the tank. Eight girls, three legs, one round champion is on the line. They're off and away. Swim board skiers the order and almost immediately Lana Rogers wearing number four and Georgia Miller wearing number three go to the front there. Naomi Scott will try and go with them and the rest of the field will try and hang on to these three swimmers because they are, well, that's their ace of spades. They're going to try and play early on in this one. Well, this one will be a lot more even, Josh, through this shore break across the bank. Going into the swim leg, no craft leg to start. We'll see the girls group up and be very, very close together. There's not really any possibility of getting hit too hard with the girls diving under these waves rolling through at the moment. And it looks like the fresh legs of Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott have gone to the front. Yeah, no big surprise there. The two girls who sat out race two, they will be in the lead. And of course, these girls not only fighting for overall points, there's six more automatic qualifier spots up for grabs in the point score after today. So in the first three rounds, the top six girls got a straight run through to today's final. And in the after three rounds, we're going to add six more to that for the second half of the season. So we'll figure all that out in the point score post-race. And let's decide a winner first. Lana Rogers in the lead. And hasn't it been an incredible 12 months for Lana Rogers? Wins her first Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series race, wins the Aussie title, and she's chasing a second here, and she's really been in fine form. Well, Josh, you spoke about those automatic qualifiers, and that is Lana Rogers. She's in the blue, as is Georgia Miller. At the back of this pack there, just ahead of Carly Northern, also in the blue, but everyone else in pink, they are our trialists. They go through every Friday afternoon trying to get to this point. They have an opportunity here to automatically qualify as the next six through to the next three rounds. And it's very tough cutthroat racing. They probably do three extra Ironmans over the weekend than the rest of these girls. So they're already at a disadvantage. But that automatic qualifying spot's so vital here in the Ocean 6 Series. It's across all events, but especially here in the Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series. And, well, win race one and you get a massive advantage and you're seeing that massive advantage right here. Lana Rogers in one, Naomi Scott in two, Maddie Dunn fighting on in third place and she's as tough as nails. She got the job done in round one in the Eliminator when the rest of the girls had sat it out. She went the whole way through and finished on the podium. And then on the left-hand side there, Gemma Smith trying to hang on. Georgia Miller back with Kirsty Higgison. Carly Nerven. And Danielle McKenzie, and there's a wave on at the moment. One and two will go down it, and just like that out in front, Lana Rogers and Naomi Scott, they get a big, big advantage and a big, big help all the way back to the beach. Well, Josh, our fresh competitors, and look at that. They've set this swim up early on. They went out hard off the beach knowing they had the fresh arms, the fresh legs, and less fatigue from the others that were lining up. And they've gone to the lead from leg one. Lana Rogers leads from Naomi Scott, one and two. Where is the rest of the field? Because they're a long way back and that advantage becomes apparent. Maddie Dunn in three. Gemma Smith will go around just behind her from Yamina in four. 
Then Kirsty Higgerson, Georgia Miller's a long way down, Jack. I would have expected more for her in the swim. Maybe she's hurting from those opening two races. Well, Georgia Miller, she's probably the strongest swimmer in the field, although with Lana Rogers, Naomi Scott there on recent form, they're certainly mixing it with Georgia Miller, and in this one have gone away. Lana Rogers just sneaks under one. Naomi Scott goes over the top. These two will be pushing. There's a wave coming. We can see the rating go up and up and over oh, the top. Lana Rogers Naomi and back Scott. shot from Naomi Scott. So skills there that have cost Naomi Scott her second position oh, and he's going to get hit again. Get. So Scott needs to get this right, needs to get through this shore break. Unbelievable there, Jack. You're spot on. She's gone from in the lead to all the way back, almost in second last place there. After that back shot, unbelievable stuff. And what about that advantage? Just goes straight out the window. And we've turned this race on its absolute head in the last couple of minutes because our leader is back into fourth place at the moment. Maddie Dunn's gone straight past her there. Gemma Smith's trying to hang on. Danielle McKenzie and out the front at the moment it's all Lana Rogers on her own. Well it goes to show how costly little mistakes can be Josh particularly in the wave zone. Naomi Scott was half a second from sneaking over that one cleanly. She got hit. She got dragged backwards and that made her hit by two or three more waves while Lana Rogers was out the back in clean water and now heading across the back of the cans. And all the bad luck no Naomi Scott got was all good luck for Georgia Miller because she's gone straight through, snuck over the top, and she's now in second place going around the cans. And Naomi Scott, not a lot of anger on the face there, but I'm sure she'll be kicking herself at that one because it was a huge mistake. Well, she looks to be hurting now, Josh. There's Lana Rogers. She's got the rating up. She can get, she can almost taste it broken away. Georgia Miller chasing, and Georgia Miller has finished second, Josh, in the first two rounds. Currently sitting in second again, has moved her way up in this in this race very, very quickly, but will be looking to go one better and take a maiden win for the season. Spot on. It's exactly right. She'd love to win races, but if you just keep keep getting second round after round and you let your rivals make the mistake you'll go a long way towards claiming the overall title Lana Rogers tries to push down one just falls off the back looks around hopes there's something behind it but there's not a whole lot off on offer Georgia Miller seems to have got a runner as well Maddie Dunn's in third Scott in four Smith and Danielle McKenzie five and six Higgison is in seven and Carly Nerven a long way back in eight as Lana Rogers picks up a small one that's going to run her all the way to the beach Maddie Dunn in second place now comes down alongside Georgia Miller there and they'll be equal on the same wave. The two girls from Northcliffe, they're going to have to chase Lana Rogers in this final ski leg. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the girls can do. Rogers knows she's got to go. She's got to get away and give herself every opportunity to get through this shore break or the break on the bank and Rogers up and away. Miller and Dunn chasing. Dunn, the winner, winner of round one, will be looking to make a big move and take her second win for the season as Naomi Scott, our early leader, comes up and around. Scott works her way through in fourth place. He should be trying to get herself back into it. And Lana Rogers makes her way towards that treacherous North Wollongong break. The two girls from Northcliffe, Maddie Dunn on the green, Georgia Miller on the grey and pink. They're chasing Gemma Smith, comes around in fifth place. Sixth is Danielle McKenzie. They'll be looking to make a move with Kirsty Higgison in seventh on the ski here. They're probably the three strongest ski paddlers in the field. Lana Rogers is out in green water. Georgia Miller is out in green water. Maddie Dunn's in green water. Oh, are they? They've got to go up and over. They both cop it on the face. I've gone too early, Jack. They got smacked, held back. So did Naomi Scott, and the gaps just opened up even more to Lana Rogers. That could have been the critical moment in today's final race. Well, it looked as though there was still an opportunity, an opportunity for Georgia Miller and Maddie Dunn to start to maybe work together and claw Lana Rogers back. But when you get hit by white water, it stops all that momentum as... Danielle McKenzie is finding out right now. Josh sitting behind her ski or beside her ski. That's not going to help her get around. And Lana Rogers is on her way out to the first turning can of three to get herself around and look for victory. If you're standing beside your ski, you might as well be moving backwards because the rest of the field's going away from you at the moment. And Danielle McKenzie forced to just stand there, wait for the waves to come through, and that will hurt her chances of getting onto the podium at the moment. Lana Rogers is at the turning can. She is on her way home. She can almost taste another round victory here at North Wollongong Beach. She puts the power down. Naomi Scott still in fourth place, trying to claw her way back 
onto the podium at the moment. Lana Rogers is working behind. We can just see Georgia Miller in second starting to work her way in. Maddie Dunn in third place. So the girls from Northcliffe chasing our leader from Noosa. And there's waves on offer out the back. You can see those lumps starting to come through. And Lana Rogers is going to look for something little, something she can manage to get home. She puts the power down. You can see the rating go up. The nose starts to dip and she's got herself a little runner, but no, just falls off the back there, makes an adjustment, and our back markers are definitely going to come down something. Here comes Georgia Miller. Here comes Maddie Dunn. Where is Lana Rogers? I don't know if they're going to get down it. I don't think they're going to get down it. They don't get down that first one. Lana Rogers just has to handle this one back to the beach, and she will be our round three Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series champion. Here she goes out the back. There's a couple of huge sets on there. This one's going to be tough. It's coming from all angles. It's coming from two different angles, but Lana Rogers handles it like the champion she is. She gets the hurry up from the handler. Big cheer there. The girls start to come down, waves out the back. Oh, Naomi Scott gets smacked from behind, but Lana Rogers is no doubt. She is our round three Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series champion. She salutes the crowd and grabs the tape and claims the top spot on the podium. The girl from Noosa is the champion at North Wollongong. Maddie Dunn comes up and around in second, and Georgia Miller keeps her run of three straight podiums going there to finish in third place. The Northcliffe girls disappointed, but very happy with that one. They look very, very tired there as well. Oh, Gemma Smith and Naomi Scott have gone off, and that's allowed Kirsty Higgison to go straight past. A clap from Dad as she goes up and around, finishes in fourth place, and back where she belongs. A big result for Kirsty Higgison there. Scott, she had so much bad luck in that final race. She'll finish in fifth. Gemma Smith in sixth place as she goes round. Then we're just waiting on Carly Nerven who's going sideways down this. She'll try and bring it back around and Danielle McKenzie who got obliterated on the way out. They'll finish in seventh and eighth place. Let's take a look and Nerven gets seventh. McKenzie get eighth but Lana Rogers the top spot from Maddie Dunn and Georgia Miller. Higgison and Scott just off the podium there. We go further down, out from Doyle, Scully, Wilden, Sneddon, Cox, Ruby Nolan gets a 16th place on debut. So does Lani Pallister in 17th. Hardstaff, Pearson Cooper. Here we are with our round three, Ocean 6, Kellogg's Nutrigrain Iron Woman champion, Lana Rogers. What about that for a bit of passion? But uh, I tell you what, the face of determination before that race, very focused today. Yeah, um, I've been really struggling mentally, especially coming off a high from... Um, the end of um, last season, um, I just really had to reevaluate, remembering why I want to do the sport, what makes me hungry, and um, it paid off today. Yeah. Now it was a, a three race format. You had a, a top two finish race one. That's uh, very beneficial going to race three, missing race two. Oh, for sure, especially with lactic acid in your body. Um, I'd rather stop than, um, than rather than keep going, keep going, and see what you have left at the end. Um, but super, super happy with that effort. I can't thank um, Darren enough and Charlene. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, really. Darren Mercer, his 51st birthday during the week as well. That's a good present for him. Really? I thought he was 21. <laughs> um, no, he acts like he's 21. Um, no, always brings a vibe. Um, really, he's kind of, I guess, even completed me into the armor when I am today. I've been in here with him since um, I finished school when I was 18 and um, never looked back. So I'm really, really happy with today's performance and where I'm going with it. Well, she should be happy with today's performance. She's on the top step of the podium for the second time in her career. Georgia Miller and Maddie Dunn side by side. Their great performance from both the Northcliffe girls and that'll put Maddie Dunn 100% through to the automatic qualification. So Dunn will automatically qualify. Higgison as well. Smith and McKenzie. We go over the page and it looks like Naomi Scott and Carly Nerven will join the rest of the automatic qualifiers. Heartbreaking.